What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Work Knife Balance. We got two knives we're going to be diving into today. Two slip joints actually, so I'm pretty excited about that to look into both of these. Uh, so before we get too far into that, I want to go ahead and just say thank you to anybody who's already liked and subscribed to the channel. If you haven't, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. You can also head over to Instagram and like us at Work Knife Balance 939 It's a great way to get communicate with us. Let us know what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Also, if you send us a knife, we'll send you a sweet sticker back when we're done reviewing your knife and looking over it. We've got a couple other stickers as well. That was just the only one I could grab and find right now at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at both of these knives. I'm going to start with this one right here, with this, which is the Lake Chaplin Barlow. Um, and then we'll get into this guy in a second. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and leave it on screen still, I guess. But um, This first impressions of this uh, being a slip joint... Um, there's not a ton that you can kind of, there's not like a detent to look at, but there's a, a spring on how it comes through. Uh, different slip joints have different stopping points. Some have like a quarter stop and then some have a half stop. Some are full open, full closed. So I think the most common is going to be a half and then a full open. And that's typically what you see on a lot of, especially more modern slip joints nowadays. This is one of those as well. So you'll have the half and then all full open right here uh, a really sturdy spring on this one for sure it's going to be something that is uh, quite snappy and fun to fidget with but it's not going to be too hard it does have a little nick right here so if you need to dig your nail into it it doesn't have like a hard edge it's more of like a rounded fuller um, but if you need to you can get your nail in there and get it out although i don't think anyone would need to this is one of two variations there's a ton of different mechanisms that there are sorry mechanisms materials um, that they've got for the little like bolster covers here or frame covers on the outside right here uh, but the scales regardless of those uh, there's two different variations there's going to be a sheep's foot and then there is also a uh, clip point i believe and i could be wrong on that yeah clip point so i was looking at my little cheat sheet right here behind me so yeah, there's a clip point and then the sheep's foot on it both of them come in about 199 dollars so 200 dollars, and you can get them on uh, traditionalpocketknives.com i don't know if this specific variation is still available but uh this right here is something that i think is absolutely wicked so they're using a lot of the believe it's a fat carbon not a camel carbon but i could be wrong on that and the colors on this one are just absolutely wicked i am colorblind so if you see something different than what i call out you're probably correct but i see kind of like a purple a pink a white and then kind of the black and gray that you get with almost all carbons there so it's a pretty sweet little pattern that comes to it i really like it dig it myself and then you've got the titanium bolster on the top up here with that milled line over the over the edge right there one thing, and they probably did this on purpose, is I would have loved to see the scale come all the way up to the milled line rather than have that edge there. But I bet they did it on purpose because uh, it's easier to manufacture and get these in here. I do love that they had the um, solid backspacer all the way through, which you will see on slip joints. You have to just for the way that they're made here. But it is a, a different finish than the actual scales and the sides as well so it kind of accents itself and it's got that like satin finish versus like a tumbled or uh, bead blasted finish on the edge here so because of that it accents itself without any sort of anodization or color and something like that and i think that's a really cool feature to it in, in what it is so yeah um right off the bat amazing ergos it is a larger knife in my opinion uh, we can go ahead and measure it real quick but it's not going to be a compact knife. It's going to be more of a full size. When I say larger, I've been carrying smaller knives recently. So it feels large in my hand just out of recency bias because I've been carrying smaller knives. But you got a little over, I guess almost, oops, almost seven and a half. A little over seven and a half. Actually, pretty close to 7.75 tip to tail. We are really close to 7.75 tip to tail. So overall length, 7.75. Um, the blade length right there, we were looking at about three and a half inches on the blade length. So um, there's not a ton more to do on that because it is just a sheep's foot with a really flat edge there. It's got a really nice hollow grind finished through. You have a really good ergos on it. It's because it's just a straight back to it, there's not much that you can like 
complain about. There's no jimping. There almost never is any jimping on slip joints that I know of just because you don't need them as much. Um, there is out there occasionally, but not a ton. It has this cool swedge that follows the blade um, on the front. It follows the sheep's foot of the blade on the front there, uh, which I thought was pretty neat and uh, just added a little bit extra to it. You can get this in a jigged titanium, and that one looks pretty wicked if I do say so myself. So the oval thumb stud though for the nail, for the nail flick to pull out right there is probably the one thing that I don't like about it. I really wish it had more of a jagged edge to itself so you could actually get your nail in there if you needed to. It does kind of slip out as I mentioned, but you can work it. Um, you just, it probably would have been a little easier with something else. It's sitting on M390 blade steel. So you've got a premium blade steel in itself with the titanium and carbon fiber. At a $200 price point, not too bad, not too shabby at all. I don't know if this comes with a slip. I don't think it does. Um, but like I said, this is in the pass around and they came in a case just with a couple knives. So I didn't actually get this with the actual case. So only has one back spring. It's got a pretty decent pull. I would say like 75% um, if we're saying 100 is the hardest pull ever. I would say we're pushing above that average 50, um, but 75% is that pull, I would say. And like, there's no way for you to quantify that, that pull strength of what I'm saying, just out of the knives that I've felt. This is a little bit stronger than average, but it's definitely not hard. And I have noticed that if you grab from the tip, you can pull a lot easier than if you grab closer to the pivot. And I think that's just physics. Um, so yeah. That is the Lake Chaplin Barlow. Pretty sweet little knife. Um, not much else to say about it. We'll go ahead and pull up this other one over here. Put the Chaplin on this side. And this, there were some pretty cool things I really liked about it. And then some things that I don't know if this is typical of slip joints. I'm new to the slip joint game. I've got some, but uh, yeah. So we'll kind of talk about them a little bit. So this is going to be the Tuya Blackbeard V2. Uh, so I have not seen the V1. I don't know what the V1 is, but this is the Tuya Blackbeard V2. And you can get this from Tuya um, directly. So it does have a really nice clip point to it. It is a really kind of cool looking knife. You've got the little maker's mark right there as an anchor on it, which is kind of cool, kind of a throw to the Blackbeard as well. And then you've got Tuya on the other side, Tuya's logo right there. Ergos on this one are just as good as the other. There's not much that it says one over the other. And I would say most slip joints, because they're gonna have more of a straight back um, to them in some areas, they're gonna feel ergonomically really well. The one thing I do like about this one is it does have that little like kick stop at the bottom where it comes out. Probably shouldn't use the word kick stop because this isn't a Chavez, but it does have a little kick that comes out here at the base that kind of holds your hand and catches you in there. So it does feel a little more secure, like it's not gonna come out. Um, really good knife. I really like the finish to it. It's just really clean lines on itself. Uh, they did put a lanyard hole on this one, which I thought was unique. Uh, most slip joints I know of don't have a lanyard hole. And this is a slip joint with a pocket clip as well. So it does have a milled titanium pocket clip to go with it. It could possibly be ambidextrous. I didn't take it apart to check, but you have a piece of hardware that goes through and I'm guessing locks into that piece of hardware right there. So if this one actually locks into that one, then when you pull this one out, you may be able to reverse it over. I didn't check, but um, that would be my suggestion. If you got this, that would probably be the easiest way to check and see if it is. Uh, yeah. Now, here's the things that I didn't necessarily love about it. I love the blade shape, I loved the feel, but if you look right here, there's kind of this play in the middle and I don't know if someone's more familiar with slip joints um, or this knife specifically, you can let me know what that play is, but I don't like it. Um, I It makes it feel less, I don't know, it makes it feel less safe in my opinion, but also less fun to fidget with because you don't have that snap, snap. You kind of have this like weak little soft work through. So I've absolutely loved everything two years ever sent um, to, and I, that I've seen in the pass around. And 
this is the first Tuya that I'm not thrilled with, but uh, it doesn't mean it's not bad. Um, so there are some still redeeming qualities to it about that. It does have M390 blade steel as well with a 60-62 HRC overall, which is kind of cool. 7.5 inch overall, and it only weighs 3.4 ounces. The fact that it is a slip joint with a clip means you don't have to have a clip slip, so that's kind of cool. You can just carry it tip down, which is nice, and then have it in your pocket without a clip slip. I oftentimes, if I have a knife in a slip, I put it in kind of a, a pocket, a secondary pocket. I don't use it in one of my main front two pockets often when I have a slip because I'm weird like that. So this would mean if I had this knife, I would be using it more often and more frequently because it had the clip on it. And then that brings it more useness, usefulness to it um, as a knife. So that's a cool part about it. The other thing uh, that it has as redeeming quality is one to me the aesthetics. They're just super clean, super nice. But that action is something that, I don't know, I would have to get over or get used to. And uh, for the price point, this is $210 on Two Years website. I don't know if I would have pulled the trigger on it, but um, if it's your thing, 100% go for it because it is pretty cool still. I think it's a, still a quality knife, still has good value to it, uh, just not necessarily my style. So those are the two knives that we had, slip joints that we were looking at today. Um, I did bring my favorite slip joint out <laughs> to put as a comparison, size comparison to these two, which is going to be the Jack Wolf Knives Cyborg Jack. So we'll go ahead and set all three of these in here, line up the pivots so you can kind of see the size comparison there too. Uh, the Jack Wolf Knives Jack Cyborg Jack right there in the middle, so it's definitely a little bit smaller than both of those two knives. And this is the size that I really appreciate and like. Um, so that would be where I'm, I land with my slip joints. Both these are a little bit larger, um, but still fantastic knives in themselves for what they offer. So, yeah, I don't have much else, and uh, I guess we'll just leave it there. Until next time, TTFN.